Greetings viewers, JLB, back with a, another video. I could have gotten this one up yesterday, but unfortunately I had to attend a funeral today, so... Yeah, I had to push the recording date at least back till after the funeral service. But anyway, with that, with all that out of the way, I'm here today to, sh to uh, present a analysis, if you will, of uh, the next show that we're going to be seeing here on the Anime Television History Tour, that being the Huckleberry Hound Show. Now, for those of you who have uh, seen any previous videos I made about Hanna-Barbera cartoons, I think you'll find that I did not mention Hanna-Barbera will go on to create other famous cartoons. And this show happens to feature four famous cartoon characters that will go on to become legends. But we'll get to that when we get to that. But first, let's talk a bit about the show itself. You see, it was the second show that Hanna-Barbera actually made during their time, following Rough and Ready, and it was actually sponsored by uh, Kellogg's. So if you have a Kellogg's cereal that you normally eat at breakfast time, why not try going to uh, the Boomerang app, if you have it, or turning on the television to uh, Cartoon Network or Boomerang, and watch your favorite cartoons? Who knows? Might bring back some memories. Now, of course, the show featured three cartoon segments to start with. One starring Huckleberry Hound, one starring Yogi Bear, and one starring Pixie Dixie and Mr. Jinx. However, the second cartoon character, Yogi, he became so popular on his own that he went off and got his own spin-off TV show. But we'll get to that when we get to that. But for now, it's all about the Huckleberry Hound show where Yogi, Huck, Pixie Dixie, and Mr. Jinx got their start. Now, how did the Huckleberry Hound show come to be? Well, Joseph Barbera, he went to Chicago to pitch the program to Kellogg's executives through their ad agency, Leo Burnett. Now, Joseph has been quoted of saying, quote, I had never sold a show before because I didn't have to. If we got an idea, we just made it for over 20 years. All of a sudden, I'm a salesman, and I'm in a room with 45 people staring at me, and I'm pushing Huckleberry Hound and Yogi Bear and the Mises, and they bought it, unquote. Barbera also once recalled Dawes Butler, or Butler Dawes, I believe. Let me check a room. Yeah, Dawes Butler, who actually played the voice of some of the the voices of some of the characters on the show. Barbera once recalled his voice acting versatility as something quite ingenious, if you will. He said, quote, I can remember distinctly when I first met Dawes, I said, I kind of like this voice, but I think I'm going to make it kind of a southern voice because southern voices are warm and friendly. And Dawes said, well, I can do a southern voice like in North Carolina, or I could do a southern voice that would be like in Florida, or if you want to get a little harder, we could get into Texas. And by gosh, we had 12 different southerners. Unquote. The, four, the series actually featured three seven-minute cartoons animated specifically for television. The first always started with Huckleberry Hound, and then the other two characters came after. Now let's talk about those three di different cartoons individually. We'll start with Huckleberry Hound. Now, Huckleberry Hound... His voice was one that Butler had already developed and used in earlier works, such as the dog character in the Rough and Ready show. If you happen to go online and look up an episode of Rough and Ready, listen to, uh, I think it was Rough, Rough the Dog, and then listen to the voice of Huckleberry Hound, and I think you might find it to be quite similar. Also, that's, this guy actually voiced... Smedley the dog in the Chili Willy cartoons, and he voiced other early characters in the MGM cartoon library. And he actually said it was based on uh, the neighbor of his wife, Murtis. Butler would then speak with said neighbor when visiting North Carolina, and that's basically how the voice of Huckleberry Hound came to be. I mean, he sounded a bit like this, sort of like in a 
southern way, sort of like someone up in North Carolina, if you will. Next up is Yogi Bear. I grew up with Yogi, so prepare to hear a little bit of gushing about the bear who's smarter than the average. Anyway, when, but when Butler actually was voicing Yogi, he was actually impersonating Ed Norton on the Honeymooners, on Honeymooners, and he had a partner who actually played the part of Yogi's sidekick, Boo Boo Bear. Don Messick, I believe his name was. Of course, you know, if you know Yogi Bear, you know where he lives. He lives in Jellystone National Park. He occasionally tries to steal picnic baskets while evading Ranger Smith, who Don Messick also voiced. And, of course, he had a relationship with his girlfriend, Cindy Bear. And, of course, you know Yogi, he'd do anything, and I mean anything, to get his hands on a picnic basket because, as Yogi would say, I'm smarter than the average bear. Now, the final cartoon that would, well, the final cartoon at that point that would be seen on the show would be Pixie Dixie and Mr. Jinx. Pixie and Dixie, they were two uh, little mice who lived in a house. Pixie was voiced by Don Messick and Dixie was voiced as Dawes Butler. You could tell them apart because because uh, Pixie wore a bow tie and Don Mess and uh, Dixie he wore a red vest. Every single day in every single episode of the Huckleberry Hound Show, they would end up getting chased by a cat by the name of Mr. Jinx, who Dawes Butler again would would voice while impersonating Marlon Brando. Now, Pix now Pixie and Dixie were always called a different name by Mr. Jinx. In the words of Mr. Jinx, yeah, they were just a couple of annoying nieces. Around 1964, I believe? Yeah, around that time, Yogi Bear became so popular on his own. Actually, 1961. 1961, Yogi Bear became a big sensation on his own. Well, of course he'd be a sensation. He's smarter than the average bear. But ultimately, he would get his own TV show, and his spot would be replaced by Hokey Wolf. Turns out, Hokey Wolf, again, voiced by Dawes Butler, was a bit of an impersonation of Phil Silvers. Hokey was a bit of a con artist wolf who was always trying to cheat his way into the simple life, much like two other Hanna-Barbera cartoons, Yogi, and another one we're going to talk about later, Top Cat. In fact, if you listen to both Top Cat and Hokey Wolf back-to-back, -back, you might notice that's the same voice. Anyway, in every single episode, he was accompanied by his diminutive bowler hat-wearing psychic, Dingaling. He was voiced by Doug Young, who was impersonating Buddy Hackett. So, we went from a dog, a bear, two mice, and a cat. A dog, two bears, two mice, and a cat, to a dog, two wolves, and two mice and a cat. Sounds pretty fair. Now, the show was originally intended to be part of a lineup of kids' programs sponsored by Kellogg's and broadcast on ABC, joining the likes of Woody Woodpecker, Superman, Wild Bill Hickok, and uh, in an early evening weekday lineup. Oh, ignore the noise in the background. Anyway, however, Kellogg's agency, Leo Burnett, he decided instead to syndicate the show so he could buy airtime on individual stations. The show was originally distributed by Screen Gems, I'm pretty sure you heard that name on the show before, which held part-time ownership of Hanna-Barbera at the time, with over 150 stations. In April 67, Screen Gems announced that the show had been released from advertiser control, and it would be made available to stations on a syndicated basis with available bridges to create 92 half-hour shows. The distribution was later passed on to World Vision Enterprises after it became a sister company to Hanna-Barbera, and it was later distributed by Turner Programming Services. After Turner's pr purchase of Hanna-Barbera, current pr distributor Warner Bros. Television, picked up ownership of the, of the show following the 1996 acquisition of Turner by parent company Time Warner. Now, the show wasn't broadcast on the same day of the week or the same time in every city. Airing depended on the deal for the time that the Leo Burna agency bookered with, uh, or brokered, I mean, excuse me, brokered with individual stations. However, the first time the Huck series appeared on television was on Monday, September 29th, 1958, 6 p.m. on Wood TV in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which also served Battle Creek, the home of Kellogg's cereals. 
Another of the stations airing it that day was WLWI in Indianapolis at 6.30. The show debuted on other days that same week in other cities. Huck originally aired in L.A., for all you California folks, on Tuesdays, Chicago, for all you people down in Illinois, on Wednesdays, and New York, for all you New Yorkers, on Thursdays. And the show first aired in Canada on Thursday, October the 2nd, 1958, at 7 on CKLW-TV in Windsor, Ontario. Now, here's the big question. After all these years, is Huckleberry Hound and his gang worthy of being revisited again? Simple answer, absolutely. Huckleberry Hound became, well, he became a star in his own right. Yogi Bear became an overnight sensation. Pixie Dixie and Mr. Jinx, as well as Hokey Wolf, they all got their spot in the Hanna-Barbera Hall of Fame. So, in my opinion, absolutely. It's worth it to go back and watch the old Hokey Wolf, Yogi Bear, Pixie Dixie and Mr. Jinx, and Huckleberry Hound cartoons. I prefer watching them all together, simply because they were part of the same show. So as a result, I hereby rate the Huckleberry Hound, the Huckleberry Hound show 5 out of 5 stars. The best show I have seen since Pow Wow the Indian Boy when this show first started. Thanks again everybody for, jo for joining us and uh, definitely stay tuned because we're going to be talking a lot more about the cartoons of the of the 50s. But we're going to be exiting the 50s soon enough and we're going to be entering the 60s. So definitely stay tuned for that. And also, I'm going to be reviewing anime of films in the future as well, along with anime TV specials. And when I say anime of films, I mean both theatrical and uh, direct and direct to uh, video releases. So until then, I suggest y'all have a good day now. Yeah, yeah. And definitely hang on to your pick and egg biscuits. Yeah. Dad, uh, keep an eye out for any misses. And we'll see you all next time.